I just want to say while we are out here, there is a lot of flies, gnats, mosquitoes, ants, ants that are just coming up from everywhere. Yes. So if you guys do happen to come out here to look at this, be careful. Yeah. Because what you think yeah. is just a clay hill. Yeah, it, is I a, mean, it's beautiful, it's but, beautiful, but you there's a lot of bugs. <laughs> everything gnats ants i mean oh my gosh and just imagine these prisoners oh. union soldiers and confederate but the union soldiers had it the worst oh my gosh just imagine with food and and feces and yeah. and people smelling i could just imagine what oh, the bugs the bugs must have ate those poor people alive okay now let's just go right into the video Okay, today we're over in Andersonville and we're going to be looking at the prison campsite of the Confederates. Okay, and on this here, where they built the prison, that right there was their only main fresh water supply. That's why they thought it would be a good site to build a prison. But unfortunately, they contaminated all the water because they used it for everything cooking bathing everything yep and this whole area here back in the civil war and there's some of it right there the wall but this was the prison stockade branch of war camp the stockade branch and like they were saying, that creek there, that whole stockade was right here. That creek was what they ate, drank, and cleaned everything. It says the Confederate officials, this source of fresh water made Andersonville an ideal site for prison. Just upstream, however, the bakehouse and guards camp polluted the creek before it even entered the stockade. Wow. So it wasn't even the Union prisoners that polluted the water. It was the friggin' Confederates and then let the water roll down. Yep. All right, let's go check it out. I mean, not only is this a historic site, this is a national cemetery is in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we're parked right here. And that's gotta be the North Gate right there. And this is where at least 500 weary men, it says, moved along slowly through double lines. Oh, God. Yep. After the prisoners passed through the outdoors, it was barred behind them. The inner gate swung open to the prison yard. New arrivals or fresh fish, as they often call, had no idea what waited for them. All right, let's do it. And this is all original from the era. 1864. Water unfit for human drinking yeah Please so. do not drink. <laughs> but that whole area there oh my gosh this is big oh i wonder what that was and this is the providence spring during the heavy rainstorm spring suddenly gushed the hillside the prisoners were desperate for fresh water over time became legendary several men claimed to have seen lightning strike this spot just before the spring burst Oh, okay. And this is how the prisoners would look like. That's how they would live and everything. And this is the spring.
Wow. We're traveling to all malice towards none. Now alongside the spring thing, there's more of these. And then there's these. Well, maybe that was for the overflow of the water, maybe? When it came down, you're saying it fills up? Yeah, you see where it's got a little Comes little down, water. it fills up. And you see crabs in there. Maybe they use that for bathing. Ooh, and frogs. Or something jumped. And then it would go right into that creek. Yeah. Alrighty. It says here, these carefully hewn, closely fitted logs reflect the deliberate design of the prison initial 16. So and this is what it was in 1684. Then they added 10 more acres by June of 64. So it's 16 and a half plus 10. Plus and then the... Yeah, not the creek that they drank from and we are right near this is the original north gate where you came in at in the prison I mean and then that's the tower but yep yeah, there was prisoners that literally touched this and that sucker solid and the view I mean it goes that way I mean the prison I don't know what all those little white markers, but we're gonna find out what they are. But I mean, this whole thing runs. That's how big. And we've only hit the entrance to it. Yeah. Wow. Wow, look at this. I mean, that's real, dude. That's real. That is real, man. Damn. It's even got a keyhole and everything. That must have been a hell of a key. <laughs> look at this. And it's double fence, so you got the outer perimeter and then you got the inner perimeter. Be careful. A lot of flies and mosquitoes out here, so if you come out here, be well, yeah. be prepared for that. But this is like this is all original. Once inside, men ex exclaimed, "Is this hell? Virtually great mass of gaunt, unnatural-looking beings." stood begrimmed and clayed in filth tatters that we saw stalking about inside this pen looked indeed as if they might belong to the worlds of the lost spirits and this is what they walked in right here into the camp and all that is your prison wow You come out here, you're definitely getting, or touching history. I don't care definitely. who you are. This is history. Okay, we were just over there where they came in. Now, some of these poles say stockade and deadline. So I'll be honest with you. I don't know what they mean but I will look into it. But I'm assuming that the stockade fence was here and the deadline was there in the military. I don't know if they did it in this time, but here, between here and here was where the security people were secure. There was nothing in here. It's kind of like in a prison. At that point on is where the prison wall began and the prisoners behind here. And this is where the soldiers would march through or walk through as they would protect the area. Now this says South Gate and this is all original here. And all along the line. So that's what these white poles are. These white poles are definitely where the wall used to come across and everything in here was the camp and it looks like there's some up there. All right, let's continue. And another note, when you do start from here, this is a one-way road, so it will take you through. So this is a driving, and there's a couple of parking spots to stop and look. Or you could just walk through or bike and park somewhere else, but this is the beginning. Okay, and this area here, outside of the stockade, so just imagine the prisoners are in there, 
where those little white sticks were that we said, stockade prison. Outside is where the Confederate and this was lived. I mean, they lived like kings and stuff, but this was the hospital. The third hospital site. Okay. And that's where this would be. And that would be this whole open area. And it kind of looks like there was a trail or something leading up to... But yeah. Okay, and let's go see what this other thing here says. Okay. Now we're over here by the Star Fort, which is where we're at right here. Yeah, and this... And then you got the third hospital, the second hospital. Of course, that's where we were, back over there. And they do have some cannons. And basically what this part was, the defense line. Uh for any invasions and these two cannons that are facing the prison that's what they were they were facing the prison so, so the Union tried to come in they... and get the prisons they would shoot inside of the camp oh, wow. of where the prisoners were so, all right let's go see over there because there's a sign over there but this here okay. is an bunkers. army base yeah definitely hills and bunkers to hide yep and it's a nice clean shot because if you look at it, yeah. it is a nice clean shot from here to inside of there. And that's where the monuments are that we will go see later. And then what we just seen here, of course, is uh, these, con these guns could defend against a cavalry attack. Loaded aim at the prison yard. Confederate cannon also discouraged mass escape. So well, if yeah. you escape, boy, it was over with for you. Uh... There looked like there was a road, but there's really not much going to be over here. But these hills and everything. Well, I guess where these is are there. Because they said five, so that would make sense. Yeah. One, two, three, four. And possibly and more. Five over there, right there. All right. Well, let's continue. All righty. Well, as the Confederates that live outside the stockade deadline. This is the water. Their bath water, latrine water, dish water. The Confederates now got all good water up here. They're up here on the outside, the good area. Comes right down here and it feeds right into the camp. And just be careful, there's venomous snakes. But what this is called is the sinks. So this is how the Union soldiers, this is literally their sink, their running water. water. And at this time when this picture was taken, it says in 1864, though living space was at a premium five to six acres near the creek remained vacant. And there's times where inadvertently the, the prison was designed for death. Stockades posts slowed the drain, drainage and during dry spells, the creek became more swamp than flow stream. Dysentery swept the camp. Whatever that is, must be a disease or something, but yeah, it says right there. It says, use latrines downstreams where the current would flush sewage out of the camp. And this is it right here. Those poor people did step into hell. Yeah, yeah. I don't care if you were white, black, green, or purple. Yep. And a lot of the photos that we've seen on PBS when they showed the documentary, I mean, I promise you, it was. this looked like the people came out of here looking like worse than the Holocaust people. Yes. I mean... This is probably where Hitler got his idea from. <laughs> Seriously. No kidding. Yeah. One spoon of salt and a, like a piece of bread and something. Then you got to drink the and water out all there. Day. Okay. Let's continue. Okay. We're on the other side, which is called the view from the pigeon roost. And uh, looks like A.J. Riddle took this picture of the camp to report to the federal government. Again, we were over there where they come in at all that. And then you have the other corner, which is the end of the, the driving yourself tour around. All right. Wow. All right, let's continue. Okay, and this is the expanded stockade. The unhewn logs with daylight between them betray the Confederates' haste to exp expand the North End camp. In contrast, the reconstruction at the Northgate section shows the carefully planned design of the stockade initial 16 acres when officials planned for only 6,000. Okay, and right where that monument is over there, 
is where we're going to go to. That is the northeast corner yeah. of it. So this is accurate. And what they had said, how the archaeologists excavated, excavated stumps. So that's how they knew to mark those little white markers. Yeah. By the stumps on the ground. They seen rotted wood. Okay, let's go over here. And uh, this kind of looks like where, I don't know what happened here, but definitely either your hands or your feet are going through here. Well, and I hope... I'm seeing hands because your hands would... Maybe this is where they tied the horses. No, nah, I think that's your feet. Dude, even my foot can get through there. But what they were saying was when they built this end, the Confederates were kind of mad because there were spaces yeah. to see through. See daylight. And they didn't like that. But if you notice on the other end, the north side, when they first initially bid that, that sucker was so tight. And this is what we're talking about, anthills. <laughs> okay. Let's go see what's inside of here. Get that gnome. Okay. Now, this is the, this is what they call the pigeon roost. Okay. And it even says here that local townspeople sometimes came to gawk at the prisoners. Ugh. Okay. And it does say here that even the Confederates themselves were scared of an uprising as well as the Union soldiers coming to get them. So, because literally they built this camp is as a death camp. Yeah, they had to overcome the and it, death. Yeah, and again, the deadline zone is no one should be in here. If you're caught in here, you're as good as dead. Yep, they shot you. And this is a marker here to show how the archaeologists got their uh, got their sites there and then as you see in here these are how the some prisoners. of the tents that the prisoners slept yeah this, that they this slept was their shelter look like it's not even big enough for a grown adult let alone oh a my child. gosh and just think like this is tart you know from today's era uh, yeah okay but just cotton, like cotton right but just imagine back then and i don't even know maybe that is from that time but i doubt it but the thing was is that's what you lived in like one person two people right there might have been a group of people and again they did not like the spaces in between because they didn't want the prisoners to see outside. outside i mean this was a death camp this was a death camp and they knew that and that's why they didn't want people to look in or out Okay, again, you know, these were the, well, they're called she bags, but they're the shelters of the prisoners. This is an actual photo. So just imagine if you're living on this end over here, to get to the creek and to get to water, you have to walk through all that. I mean, everyone was on top of everyone. And then you had the gawkers looking at you. Mm. Wow. Okay, let's go right to the monuments, and that's the end yeah. of this uh, camp prison camp here something just to say about this end over here we did notice there was two cannons on that end so one facing that way the other facing that way and again the outside of here is where the confederates live uh very good that makes sense yep that all these monuments here are monuments of the states that the prisoners were from yep and this is Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Known dead. 378 people. And that's their monument. All right, let's go see the other states that they captured. Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Honoring their dead. All right, let's go to the next one. Good old... Massachusetts, death before dishonor. Tennessee. Yep, Tennessee got one too. Okay, now this one here basically is just to dedicate to everyone. The Delaware. Union. So Delaware, 39 dead. Kansas, four. four. Kentucky, 417. Maryland, 178. Missouri, 104. New Hampshire. 144 of Vermont, 244 in West Virginia. Those were the people that fought out here or they were prisoners out here during that war. And they got a couple of more right here. A statement. Yeah, Ohio's making a statement here. They got the tallest, well, the tallest. 
Let's go see who this one is. 1,000 loyal, loyal sons. sons. Oh, oh my gosh. From Ohio. Maybe that's why they're making a statement. Whew. Okay, and then we got old Michigan here where you're from. Yep, my birth state. Yep. My home state. All right, let's go check out the other ones. All right, this is just a dedication to Abraham Lincoln and the general. These were the orders that Abraham Lincoln wrote. And uh, this general here, order number 11. And again, that's what you'll see next to the Abraham Lincoln Monument that's written yeah. up the four scores. Yeah, that's what that is. Okay, let's go over here. All right, and they just put a sundial here. A monument of a sundial. Of the Patriot Works of the Women's Relief Corps. Women's okay. Relief Corps. All right, let's go to the next one. Well, here's a tidbit of history. Okay. Father Peter Wellen, Irish-born Catholic, Catholic, priest from Savannah. Came here June 16th, 1864 uh, to minister the sick and dying. while other priests visited for a brief period. So we only remained for nearly four months during the hottest season and the highest mortality. Wow. wow. Okay, that's something good to know too. All right, got two more. This one here is... Incomparable. The, the Untiring Devotion, Clara and Barton. Yep. Okay. And then we got this right here. It's going to be Elizabeth A. Turner, past National, National President Turner. Women's Relief Turner. Course. All right, and let's go see with that tree. That tree has a sign there, and then that's it. Yeah. The ground at this end of the prison is pocketed with deep holes, either tunnels or wells. Overcrowding, disgust and disguised and digging beneath the sea of tattered shelters, prisoners could work undetected with mass plates, spoons, and canteen halves. Wow. It just says, just as it was coming to light in the east, we heard dogs come after us. And this is crazy wow. because by that other monument over there, there is a tree with a hole. And I thought it was just a sinkhole, uh, but no, not. this is where I thought the prisoners. Over there too. Okay, where by the, camp, by the museum? So, yeah, over yeah, that's by, by the, the museum then. Okay, but yeah, that's where the museum is. All right, this is it here. Uh, for now, for now. Uh, well, this is it for the prison war. Prison. Yeah, this is where the, the prison camp Confederate camp. soldiers brought the Union soldiers here practically to die oh, <laughs> that's it death practically you know to die and that's it and then after this day of course after eight that's months. where dog tags started coming out because then they wanted to respect they told abraham lincoln that no that the dead need to be named and respect and be brought and back they buried right and they brought them all some back to arlington yeah so but many it, of them were just put in mass graves or never collected yeah and that's what we're gonna see because there is a mass Union soldier grave site yeah. right here. So. But it was after the Civil War is where dog tags come into play and the National Cemeteries. Yes, yes. All right, well, into our next video. Remember, if you come here, it's really <laughs> bugs, big. snakes, flies, gnats, but it's a beautiful place. Yeah. Other than that, try to come when it's cooler. Yeah. Into our next video, yeah. BB's Adventures. Bye.